so 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 here let's uh, choose something in the middle right so let's uh, choose uh, uh, just uh, taking two neighboring grid points into consideration in reality you can choose a little bit more right uh, depending on uh, how accurate you want it to be and uh, how uh, so, so here actually another consideration is the presence of shock waves right and if you have a discontinuity like interpolating over a discontinuity uh, give rise to a separate problem so so let me just uh, uh, say a little bit about interpolation and uh, the two things to uh, be very careful about interpolation so the first thing to be careful is about the so-called wrong phenomenon Okay, wrong phenomenon is you use a too high order interpolation on the not so particularly arranged grids. So if you try to interpolate this function over uniform spacing, you can easily get something like, uh, okay, so I have a value here, you can easily get uh, like a wild oscillation around the two ends, right? So, so that's the wrong phenomenon. And another phenomenon is called the Gibbs phenomenon. And uh, uh, the the uh, the thing about Gibbs phenomenon is that uh, if you have what's that? Okay, is you have a discontinuity and you interpolate over finite grid points, the resulting interpolation is going to be something like uh, you have you do fine uh, in in many circumstances, but like then around the oscillation you are going to have uh, around the discontinuity you have overshoots and undershoots. So both happens if you try to use a higher order interpolation that is very good for smooth functions over particular grids, but uh, um, is more sensitive to things like uh, grid spacing and uh, discontinuity of the function. All right. So these are the two things that makes uh, a higher order interpolation not as good. And usually you want to just uh, choose some, some trade-off in between like piecewise constant interpolation and uh, uh, a higher order interpolation. I guess that's a long answer to your question. All right, any other questions around the how do we interpolate? Okay, so anyway, uh, let me just uh, show you uh, how you would do Taylor series analysis to things like finite volume. Okay, so if you if you want to say, okay, what's the order of accuracy of a uh, over a uniform grid point, uh, a uniform grid spacing, of just uh, taking the average. So, so how what's the truncation error between my w at x i plus half? So let's say this is uh, uh, this is x i plus half, okay. Uh, minus the average of w i and w i plus one bar. These are by themselves volume averages right okay so that's basically uh, w x i plus half minus well it's basically the volume average over the two cells it's in average between i minus half and i plus two third uh, not two third uh, three halves w times dx right Okay, so uh, you would ask, uh, how can I do Taylor series analysis to this? I have an integral in it. Well, actually, you do Taylor series analysis exactly the same way, but instead of expanding particular grid points, you expand actually the function. So W at any x can be actually expanded around this point. Is W of x i plus half, right? Uh, plus whatever x minus this x i plus half is times partial w partial x at x i plus half right okay and then uh, the higher order terms are the same uh, plus half square second order derivative also at I, x i plus half plus etc right Okay, so then if I integrate, if I integrate 
W over a particular domain. So let's say xi plus half minus delta x, which is this, and xi, uh, sorry, plus half, plus half plus delta x. Uh, then I would just be integrating all of these functions. So, so first of all, I integrate the constant term. Uh, let's just directly take an average uh, to delta x. That makes it easier. So the average of the constant term is what? Oh, the co average of the constant term is the constant itself, right? There is no... Uh, average a constant function, what do you expect? And then the average of this function, which is what function? What does this function look like? It's a linear function, right. So what's the average of a linear function? It's basically the, the value of the function in the middle, right? And OK, so here, the middle of the domain is actually exactly x i plus half. So the average of this linear function when x is equal to x i plus half is equal to 0, right? OK, so plus 0. This is 0 now. And then this term is actually critical to the truncation error because this is a quadratic term. And uh, actually, if you look at this, it's strictly positive, And there is no way this is going to average to 0. So what is it going to average to? Oh, you can do a lot of uh, uh, calculus. It's integral of a quadratic function, right? You get a, basically, you get a factor. All I need to know is you get a factor and a cubic term, right? So basically, uh, it's a, uh, you can work out the constants. But wh whatever I know is it's actually delta x to the cube. Right. Times actually the second order derivative of x, and of course we are dividing by by two delta x, so it basically uh, changes my cube to square because of the average as opposed to the integral. Right. Okay. So that's that's it. So basically we can work out the truncation error. The final conclusion is that the truncation error is o delta x squared. Well, uh, this is when the two cells are exactly the same width. And if the two cells are not exactly the same width, then the middle of this linear function is actually not going to be exactly equal to 0. And you would get a first order term as opposed to the second order truncation error over here. So this is uh, uh, how the truncation error analysis in finite volume actually works. All right, any questions? No? OK, so then, uh, by the way, the truncation error analysis actually only would make sense in smooth regions. All right, so you, you don't really apply the truncation error analysis to shock waves because uh, none of these derivatives actually make sense. So in, in finite volume, uh, what you do is actually you want to make sure the solution is uh, uh, of certain order for smooth solutions. And then you capture the shock wave. You capture the speed of the shock wave correctly which you can actually prove to be true if you have the discrete conservation property. So the discrete conservation property uh, here uh, ensured by, by this uh, relationship between n and f ensures the correct propagation of shock waves and uh, a truncation error analysis in the smooth regions provides the accuracy in smooth regions.